Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. I know this probably isn't going to be the most feel-good way to start the week, but the purpose of these morning briefings isn't to make you smile, it's to keep you focused. And there's few things I can think of more sobering than the deaths of babies. The black infant mortality rate is the highest of any group, and it's for that reason that we have to discuss it. A lot of you have posted comments in response to last night's Sunday address saying that we must have more black doctors. Agreed. That would certainly help. But it doesn't help to have black doctors if they show the same contempt for black life as their white supremacist counterparts. Even the white media has been forced to admit that the black infant mortality rate is the result of race. Now, they've tried to go ahead and sprinkle some sugar on it, but nonetheless, they have to say that the mortality rate for black babies is cut dramatically simply by having a black physician care for them, with the mortality rate dropping by as much as 50% under those circumstances. This has been documented and reported by the white media. So the difference isn't medications or different types of tests or the parents' level of income or education. The difference is simply having a black health care provider caring for that baby. Now, of course, being the white media, they can't tell the whole truth. They wouldn't be the white media if they did. So in this case, the Washington Post tries to put up some phony doubt. They try to throw some sugar on this garbage and say that, well, the research found an association, but not a cause and effect. Sure, because a 50% drop in the mortality rate for black babies under black physicians' care, that's just a coincidence. See, if something happens once, it's a phenomenon. If it happens twice, then it's a coincidence. But when something happens consistently, at least 50% of the time, that is a significant factor. But, of course, black people are the targets of a perpetual race war, and in war, truth is the first casualty. So, of course, the white media is going to tell two lies for every fact that they're forced to report. They expect us to pretend that a 50% drop in black infant deaths is some sort of confusing phenomenon and that there's no real explanation for it. Because, of course, to simply accept the facts means that all these dead black babies aren't happening by chance. They're not happening by accident. It's not the result of training, the white supremacist's favorite catch-all excuse. But to admit that there is a clear racial component to all this, why? That's something that simply cannot be said. That would simply be too disturbing for the Washington Post or any other white media outlet to simply come out and say. So instead, we get this charade. Placing a black child in the hands of a non-black physician makes the chances of that child dying rise dramatically. This is medical apartheid, and it proves that the death rate of black infants isn't some unfortunate circumstance. It's not a coincidence. Now, we hear from these right-wing racists all the time that black college graduates simply aren't as skilled or qualified, etc., as their white counterparts. Well, we know that's false. The white media spent decades, ever since the 60s, trying to justify ethnically cleansing the universities of black students. And to do it, they pushed all kinds of lies. Like the one about every black student who gets a seat in college. Well, that's a seat that a white student should have gotten. And they use these lies to lay the groundwork for their lawsuits in the 1990s attacking affirmative action, which was nothing more than a clumsy front for purging all black students from America's collegiate student body, regardless of how they got admitted. Well, it's time to ask how good a job the black graduates did compared with their non-black counterparts, and the results are in. Black physicians do a superior job, especially when it comes to black infants. Because all these other doctors and nurses who the white right told us were so much more qualified than the black ones, they're the ones who the black babies are dying in the hands of. But none of them gets punished. None of them loses their licenses. None of them gets prosecuted. And of course, the white right is not on some holy war jihad crusade to try to make sure that all of these unqualified doctors don't get to practice medicine. Because this is not about qualifications or college admissions. This is about control of the society. After this Washington Post piece ran, the next question should be, why is it that there was not a tsunami of malpractice lawsuits flying left, right, and center? Well, that's hard to do because in order to prove malpractice, you have to get a physician in the same field who is willing to say under oath that what the non-black doctors did was wrong and contributed to, if not caused, the black baby's death. And since not many are willing to do that, these baby killers are allowed to remain right where they are, looking for their next victims. We need to be bluntly honest. There are a number of rapists and even serial killers operating out of these hospitals under the guise of being physicians. 
They commit their crimes while putting their patients under anesthesia or by performing procedures that the patient didn't need. But mostly, they commit their crimes by denying black people who came to them for medical care the very care they demanded. In every state, and certainly in every large city, there is one if not a number of hospitals that are notorious for routinely having black people come there alive and leave very shortly thereafter dead. You have a lot of racist doctors who hide behind their medical degrees the same way the police hide behind their badges. And like the racist cops, these racist doctors have been allowed to get away with murder by claiming that we should all simply take their word for it that they didn't kill the black person who lies dead in their hospital. There's bodies of case law meant to insulate these crooked doctors from punishment, same way we've seen the law try to protect police with so-called qualified immunity and other legal fictions. But just like with the police, if we focus light on this medical apartheid and the mountain of dead black bodies it's produced, the bureaucratic wall they built to allow them to harm black people without consequence can be brought down. The killers in lab coats can be made to answer for their crimes. Now, that said... There is something else that needs to be noted here, and I know it's going to sound demoralizing, maybe even a little contradictory, but it needs to be said. While having a black doctor is the best way to minimize the chances of some racist with a medical degree harming your child, we must keep in mind there's a number of black people working in the medical field, many of them who come from abroad, who are silent while all this is going on, and in a number of cases, perhaps even complicit. Keep in mind, the reason the Tuskegee experiments were able to happen was because they used a black nurse, Eunice Rivers, as their go-between, so that the white supremacists who set up that genocidal exercise could lull their black victims into a false sense of security. Keep in mind, for those of you who may not know, there's been a cure for syphilis since at least the 1920s. It was put into wide use in the 1940s. The Tuskegee experiments, which was actually a genocide, was started in the 1930s and it continued all the way up until the 1970s. It wasn't some brief aberration, it wasn't some bad luck accident, it wasn't the result of a temporary oversight. This wasn't a case of one or two bad doctors who were doing some unauthorized criminality that nobody knew about. This was going on from the Great Depression all the way up until Nixon was about to get kicked out of office. It started before World War II, and didn't stop until almost the end of the Vietnam War. So... Who got punished for the Tuskegee experiments? Nobody. They didn't even bother to try to make Eunice Rivers into a fall guy. The problem wasn't that they didn't know what the effects of syphilis were. The entire reason that they worked to make a cure for it was precisely because they knew exactly what it did. The Tuskegee experiment was not scientific inquiry. It was just another in an endless parade of anti-black sadistic warfare against us. My goal in pointing this out isn't to get you to mistrust black doctors. My point is to help you understand that simply having a black caregiver standing in front of you may not be enough. If you have a black caregiver who's taken on a white supremacist mindset where black patients are concerned, or who has a bootlick mentality, they can be just as dangerous as any racist white supremacist with a lab coat. You gotta watch these folks who are coming out of these racist universities, medical schools, or out of these community colleges and such. You also gotta watch a number of these folks who are coming from overseas. This is heavy stuff, I know, but not as heavy as a black baby's casket. Part of why we need reparations is due to the nonstop hyper-aggressive medical warfare that's been waged against us and continues to be. We require black doctors because these white supremacists in these hospitals are allowed to orchestrate our deaths with impunity. When you see the white media simultaneously talking out of both sides of its mouth, in one breath saying that black babies are more likely to live in the hands of black doctors, and then turning right around and saying, well, that doesn't mean that there's a cause and effect, that's not some harmless omission on their part. It's them doing their job as the propaganda arm of white supremacy. First, they try to convince you that you didn't see what you clearly see happening. Then they say, well, if you saw it, it's not very often and you're just being paranoid. Finally, they admit that it is happening and it's as bad as you said it was. In fact, it's actually worse, but it's not happening for the reasons you say it is. This is the white media equivalent of playing keep away with the truth. Well, I say we should stop playing along. Some people think it's a cliché to say the children are the future, but actually it's a redundancy. Of course children are the future. And history has shown that a people who do not protect their babies are a people who will have no future. 
We need more doctors, a lot more. We also need funding for those black doctors to have their own medical practices with sufficient up-to-date equipment. Reparations is about getting the check that we are owed individually, but it also encompasses much more, such as the industrial, educational, and medical infrastructure that we have been systematically deprived of for so long, an infrastructure that we require because we have been categorically denied these things at our expense, at the expense of our health, at the expense of our longevity, and at the expense of our lives, and those of our babies. And that is a sin that can never be forgiven. I'm no medical doctor, but you don't have to be to see that the reason so many black people live sicker and die younger than everyone else is because we are being systematically denied health care. And it's not by accident. It's by design. And that won't change until the medical status quo in this country fundamentally changes. That means we have to get rid of the white supremacists and the white lab coats and their flunkies and replace them with actual doctors who are there to heal patients and not to use the doctor's office as a slaughterhouse with fluorescent lights. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Lisa Cabrera, Stay Positive, D. Tubman, Andrew Murphy, and Daryl Bledsoe. Salute to them, and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black Empowerment only exists because of you.